welcome back at the Technical Forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries. We are here at the Hanover Fairground in the year of 2016. My next speaker is coming all the way from Norway and we are discussing the improvement of the, on the durability and the performance of solid oxide fuel cells. So please welcome with me on stage the general manager of Serpotec, Mr. Dr. Ave Solheim. Big hands, please. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to see that so many have found their way to uh, listen to me talking about um, how to improve uh, performance and durability of solid oxide fuel cells. Personally, I think there's one very easy answer to that. Use Serpotec powders. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Serpotec is what we do and what we can do. And I'm going to give you a few examples of uh, how uh, powders affect uh, the quality of, uh, of fuel cells. A little bit about the history of, um, of Serpotec. We are a small Norwegian uh, company. We span out of the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in uh, 2007 based on um, a few professors starting up uh, their own production of uh, powders using a method called spray pyrolysis. So that's what we do. We use spray pyrolysis as a method to make ceramic powders. Uh, the company was founded in, uh, in 2007. In uh, 2013, we moved out of university campus and into our own uh, premises, where we now have a uh, small industrial production of, of powders. Um, it's easier when I stand here. I can look at my slides. Uh, we have in our uh, production facility a complete uh, process chain from raw materials to finished powders. Uh, we have a capacity of two to five tons depending on which material. Uh, and we have a very wide range of um, composition that we can make. Uh, we also, since we are a spin-off out of a university, we are quite academic. Uh, so we have a lot of analysis techniques in-house and we also uh, have a lot of external uh, facilities that we can use. We produce powders for uh, different applications. The most important and the area where we started up was uh, solid oxide fuel cells, which has now also turned into uh, electrolysis cells, but that's just the other way around, so we can fix that. There's a lot of membrane materials, uh, oxygen, hydrogen conductors, that are based on the same types of materials, so we got that for free. Uh, in addition, we also do uh, some electronic materials, especially lead-free piezo uh, um, materials piezoelectric materials uh, and um, at last we have this what we call toolbox uh, meaning that we are able to custom make a lot of different powders we have a standard uh, portfolio of materials that we sell through internet or to customers that come to us but we also have the ability to make non-standard materials that's one of our uh, strengths. This is a list of uh, our standard uh, materials for uh, fuel cells and electrolysis cells. You'll find the same in our uh, website, www.serpotec.com. So I'm not going into that in detail. We are, as I said, a, a quite academic company, so we have been uh, working a lot in, uh, in development together with industry and academic um, institutions in different uh, projects. Our favorite is EU projects, and this is a list of some of the EU projects that we have been working with in or that we are still working in. Metprocell and Demcamer, uh, AMS Copper, Evolve is an ongoing uh, SOFC uh, project. Uh, Coatly is, uh, is also an um, a fuel cell uh, project where we work with PEM electrolysis, electrolysis. and SAS is a, is a sink air um, 
the battery uh, project that we just started up under the Horizon 2020 scheme. I told you that our production process is uh, spray pyrolysis. So that's our core, core technology. It's actually quite a simple process, but it's quite complex anyway, because, and that's where we have our uniqueness in the company. Uh, we have, our speciality is the, is the precursor solution man making, uh, where we have a lot of uh, degrees of freedom and parameters to vary powder qualities. Um, and also that's where we ensure that the stoichiometry of the powders are uh, really correct. We spray this uh, water-based uh, precursor solution through a furnace, schematic, uh, schematically presented here, uh, where the spray is uh, pyrolyzed. And we get a ceramic uh, powder out on the other end. Um, through this process, when we spray uh, atomized uh, droplets um, into the furnace, the liquids will evaporate. So we get a shell of metal salts, which again um, decomposes or pyrolyzes into a shell of uh, metal oxides. So through uh, very accurate control of the precursor, we get a very accurate uh, and very homogeneous uh, distribution of the elements in the, in the oxide, so we get a very pure uh, powder. After the, the pyrolysis, we have different steps that we can do. We can calcine in order to get the, a very um, face pure powder. We also do milling to get the right uh, powder morphology and uh, particle size distributions and so on. Uh, one of the very nice things about um, uh, pyrolysis is that you get a very uh, reactive powder uh, directly from the process. So the powders, they are um, optimal for, for using for sintering. Okay. So I've already mentioned uh, some of this, but again, the, the process yields very um, exact stoichiometry, that the mixture of the elements are, are um, exactly as we, we want it to be. Uh, and due to the mixing in a, in a liquid state, we get very homogeneous powder. From the calcination process, we can get very high uh, phase purity, and that's one of our specialities. And through control of the raw materials, we get or can get a very low level, or at least we can control the level of uh, contaminants. Um, we also like to brag about the particle size distribution and the uh, surface, uh, specific surface areas of our powders, which render them excellent for sintering, which among others can reduce uh, processing temperatures, which is uh, important industrially. As I said, we have a large uh, menu of materials that we can make, and this is just a schematic. I think you maybe know this, uh, this table from before. But all the green elements in the periodic um, table here are elements that we can do, and any stable, thermodynamically stable uh, combination of, of uh, several elements is what we are specialists on. So now I'm going to uh, get into the field of the company that I'm not the specialist in. So this, uh, this presentation is actually uh, my colleague Guttorm's uh, speciality, but he's uh, back in Norway and uh, he's becoming a father again. Uh, this is um, measurements uh, on symmetrical cells in pure oxygen, showing the impedance um, uh, for um, materials fired at the top left side. Uh, the materials are fired at 1100 for two and six hours. Curves showing that shorter uh, firing time gives higher, uh, better uh, performance. On the right-hand side, different temperatures have been used. 
showing that the lower you can get in temperature, the better uh, performance you get. And the corresponding um, area-specific resistances are, uh, are uh, listed below. So low temperature and low, uh, low um, firing time is, uh, is uh, important. And if you go back a little bit, you remember that one of the things that we can achieve by using very reactive powders are lower uh, sintering temperatures. Uh, this is a comparison of, of different um, materials. One of them is, is ours and uh, two others made in the Evolve uh, project, uh, showing the area-specific resistance of, of different materials. What I tried to tell you with this is, of course, that Serpatec materials are uh, better than every, every other material, but there are differences depending on the type of synthesis route uh, that the materials are made by. Uh, so there might be several, uh, several explanations to this. Phase purity is definitely one of them. The grain size or the powder, uh, the, the, um, the size, of, size of the powder is another. And the smaller you get, the, the more distributed you get the active triple phase uh, boundaries, which is also uh, affecting the, the area-specific resistance of the materials. Another comparison also done in the Evolve uh, project, this time with uh, SLT uh, powders for anodes, uh, showing the, the um, connectivity. Uh, where, of course, again, I wouldn't have shown this if it wasn't for that uh, Serpatec powder has a higher conductivity. But there are several possible uh, explanations to that, uh, where we have proven that the phase purity and the grain size of, of our powders affect the conductivity in a very positive way. Another, uh, another study made by Sintef in Norway, an independent but paid um, uh, research in institute. They did a, a, a comparative study of our, um, one of our powders. It's a uh, lanthanum nicolate. It's a mixed ionic uh, electronic uh, conductor, a MIEC, also suitable for, for uh, solid oxide fuel cells showing exactly this phenomenon of uh, the other one is a co-precipitated powder, uh, showing this phenomenon on, on uh, phase purity. Um, this is sinterability, showing that the red curve has a sintering onset approximately 200 degrees lower than, uh, than the, uh, the, the co-precipitated powder which is a tremendous advantage uh, industrially. One, two, two minutes. Uh, and uh, finally, um, the performance as an as a oxygen uh, membrane, where the oxygen flux is, is higher. There are different, uh, different possible uh, explanations for the, for the higher oxygen flux. Uh, this just shows uh, the variation we can get in, in, um, in morphology of powders by varying different uh, spraying parameters from precursors through the pyrolysis. This shows uh, how calcination temperature affects the, the phase purity and actually also the, the size of, um, of the cr uh, crystallites. Um, which is actually working in the opposite direction. So the higher you get in, in the calcination, the lower reactivity you get. So there's a balance there. Um, effect of milling on the morphology of the powders. So I have to stop, but what I've been trying to, to tell you is that the quality and morphology of, um, of the raw materials play a very important role to the end product, in this case, uh, solid oxide fuel cells. And spray parallels is a very effective method of producing large varieties and also large amounts uh, of, um, of powders. Uh, and we are able to, to vary parameters in order to, to meet defined specifications. And that's exactly what we are here for, to do that for you if you need it.
We have just launched a new website, so please go and uh, have a look. We have uh, a brand new web shop, so you can uh, go directly into the net. And finally, please come and visit us at the Norwegian booth on B60, just a few blocks over there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ava Solheim. Once again, you can visit and take all your questions to the booth. It's right across and it's B60. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next topic is a topic. It's not as in the program cancel. We do have a speaker here. The next topic will be about not SRFC, but we will be discussing the membranes and PEM fuel cells. And for that, we'll hear Dr. Weisbecker from the Forschungszentrum Jülich. That will be only in two minutes' time. <laughs> 